Welcome Hi. back. And uh, we're here. We are here. And anything that we say is not meant to diagnose you. Check with your doctor before taking any of the recommendations, okay? No treatments, no cures. Well, I didn't say that, but. I'm <coughs> saying it. So I um, have a lot of interesting questions for you guys. Has some interesting topics. And? Um, and what? What? Quizzes. 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 For those of you that don't know that we, we just uh, started a new cooking channel, or re recipe channel, Keto, you can go to our website. Actually, no, go, go to, to YouTube. YouTube under channels and you'll find it. We're releasing a lot of good videos. I think you have to go to the Dr. Berg channel. We just released the lasagna one. That one is to die for. So uh, listen, while you're checking on social media, Karen, I'm going to go right to uh, Denise from Here Kentucky. Right. Denise, are you there? Hey, Dr. Berg, yes, I am. Hey. No. Hey, yeah. thank you for taking my call. And hey, Karen. Hi. Hey, Dr. So, well, nearly two years ago, I called you because I had gut tape psoriasis that I had gotten after having the flu and strep throat and took the antibiotics. Three doctors said it would never go away. You said take 75,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. I have completely gone. It took it still to this day it's gone but I've got wow. something else happening with my skin now okay so about about eight weeks ago I was cleaning out the fence line and I got into some vines maybe poison sumac I don't know and on my wrist I got these spots that were itching I assume that's what it was well, I didn't put anything on just let it run its course I didn't take Benadryl or anything well the spot showed up on my stomach and my back and my legs and it's like eight weeks now. The sores are just now starting to heal, and they're scabbed over because I can't stop scratching them when I'm sleeping at night. So, and, and they're healing, but they're leaving like a discolored brown spot on my skin. And I'm wondering, do, why does my skin keep getting attacked? Do I have an autoimmune problem? I sort of doubt it. Can't diagnose you, but it doesn't sound like you have that at all. Um, obviously, okay. what's your age? 54 and 54. healthy. And that's, keto. Great. that's great. I just noticed with myself, like um, my ability to heal, especially skin, if I compare it to like when I was 18 versus now, it's just like taking a little longer. I don't know if that's the reason, but <laughs> there's a couple of things that you might want to try to speed up the, just the peeling response. Um, one would be zinc because zinc handles kind of uh, non-healing wounds in general. That's one idea. Now, if you have this, like especially if it's like scarring from either acne or something some, something you had in your skin, uh, there's something that I found that's really good. I think well, you'll like it. And it's a standard process, pr standard process product. I don't carry it, but you can look it up. And it's called Dermatrophin PMG. And that's just good for um, kind of helping uh, scars after acne or after what you have, uh, discoloration. So that's something you might want to try. And then other than that, you just, you just want to eat, keep eating healthy and um, keep your, um, your skin full of as many nutrients as possible from the inside out. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And speaking about skin, let's just talk about one topic I wanted to mention. It's called the keto rash. Because yeah. what I did is I looked at some of the questions uh, from the reminder video that we put out and several people want to know about this keto rash thing. And uh, the remedy that I recommended is a couple in some other videos, but I just want to give people a summary. Um, one common remedy is uh, vitamin B2, riboflavin. And you know another name for B2 is vitamin G. Interesting. And Standard Process used to use a product, Cataplex G. Remember that product? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what's that good for? You remember that? Skin tags, warts. Because it works on the? Skin. Liver. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, so it's a... It's, it's you can't fool me. I know. Yeah. So I'm trying to lead you into... So <laughs> we have the liver. So the other recommendations that work better for skin rash, especially from keto, is bile salts, purified bile salts. And um, the reason, the connection there is that bile, your liver makes bile. So when you introduce more fat, because... What's different about the ketogenic diet? You reduce the carbs, but you also increase the fats. If you don't have enough bile 
reserves that are being produced by your liver because maybe you're just not adapted yet to that or because uh, your body has to then generate more bile salts or it could be a fatty liver which is decreasing the ability to produce bile then you start getting congestion in the through the bile ducts you'll have a deficiency of bile and what happens they don't know exactly what happens but there's a related um, itchiness and even in some uh, circumstances a rash now there's a certain um, so-called disease I'm not going to get into the long name of it but that people say well it's a, it's a certain disease that comes from a skin disorder like a dermatitis but they don't know what caused it um, and that comes from doing keto but it also comes from having um, problems with your bile ducts and it also has problems when you do uh, gastric bypass so it all comes down all these roads come down to one thing Karen like a bile deficiency so taking enough bile um, can help the skin rash and it could be because it um, in some way helps the liver but it also could be because you're not able to absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin E which are essential for the skin so if you have a vitamin A deficiency you have all sorts of skin problems so in a, in a long summary it just take purified bile salts if you have a keto rash any questions any questions anyone anywhere we have one you? from the audience in studio How about you? audience there we go where am i going to get bile salts mm, that's a good question um, you can you can get them uh, we do have a product that has it in there and it's called gallbladder formula mm -hmm. has a dish a lot of other stuff to help the digestion but um Anywhere else you can get it? I mean, in food, or is it just no, is you, it's a supplement? No, you, you, you don't eat bile salts. They're purified. They, they're ox bile, so it comes from the ox. So they purify it, I and they have these bile salts. I have some ox bile in a long time. You know, they come in a tablet, so that way you don't have to chew them. Good. But they're, I found that um, it's, so, it's something that no one talks about, but it's a common thing a lot of people have is a bile deficiency, and they have, not only do they get, um, they can't digest the, the fat soluble vitamins, so they have, like, problems with the vision, the skin, the immune system. Vitamin D, mm. is that essential for the immune system? Essential. So if you guys have questions about bile deficiencies, I have probably like a hundred videos on that. You can check them out later. All right. There you go. So you have some good questions. Sure. Okay, so what would you do if you got lightheaded while you were fasting? I would take sea salt because your volume of what happens is um, your volume of fluid, like if, if you don't take, if you're not eating, you're not going to probably take salt, and you need literally on keto about a, um, a teaspoon, a level teaspoon of sea salt per day to be able to maintain certain physiological processes. So if you don't have enough, your volume of your blood goes down, you get dizzy, your muscles get tired, you get weak. So sea salt is very important on when you're doing intermittent fasting. Okay. And is that the only thing when you're fasting that can make you tired? No, it could be low potassium too. Low potassium because you're, you're deficient. Uh, you need so much potassium uh, every day. And if you're not consuming enough, then where is it going to come from? The other thing that, well, that's a side note. I won't get into that. But yeah, potassium for energy, sodium. And you have something in your cells called the sodium potassium pump that does a lot of things to help you maintain the battery, to activate your muscles and your nerves. So and your body consumes like 30% of all your energy is consumed for that little pump. Mm -hmm. So you need to support the pump, Karen. Support the pump. <laughs> I will. Okay, good. Okay, good. So here's another one. Yeah. So I didn't get the name here, but they added 30 grams of what they call jumbo oats into their keto diet. Is that okay? No, that's not okay. I didn't that's think That's not okay, okay Karen. Not We're not going to go into the grain I'm super family. curious about a jumbo oat versus... Um, a mini oat? A regular oat. <laughs> but regardless of the size of the oat. I have the first uh, quiz for everyone. Okay, okay this is, here um, we go. Here it is, guys. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. What is better to use to as an antiviral? Soap or alcohol? Using soap to wash your hands or alcohol gel? <laughs> okay. I'm just clarifying. Like, Are you thinking, like, because you what's know better, to take soap in your mouth or drinking alcohol? To have liquor stores open. So I thought you were going, like, is it better to wash your hands or just <laughs> go have hey, a Listen, drink. if you drink alcohol, you won't even know you have a virus. <laughs> a virus, right. You're oblivious to it. 
So um, oh that's the first goodness. question, guys. Let's okay. see if you so um, on can your get hands, the right answer. Is it better to have soap or alcohol? Yeah, wash your hands with soap or wash it with gel. 60% um, alcohol. Gel. Gel. Okay. okay. That is a good While quiz. people are... Yeah, that um, is... That is... Uh, is that timely. good? Timely. Timely. Is it good, Karen? I like it. Okay. So you... you s oh, should I watch my social watch media? Watch those um, okay. answers. And you can do that. I'm going to go to... Um, <laughs> Irasima has been waiting patiently from Chicago. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. What was your question? Um, my question is that uh, I have a 19 centimeter fibroid a tumor. And uh, my question is, is it preventing uh, from me losing weight or seeing any uh, results on the scale? Because uh, it seems I've been doing keto for 10 months, healthy keto. I've been following you for the past 10 months. And I'm, now I start fasting 24. Wow. So I'm fasting 20 and having a four period window. So, uh, and I'm, I'm, logging, I'm back to loving my food. And I'm trying to go under 1,500 calories. Okay. Um, how many times a day are you fasting? How many times a what? How many, how many meals? What was four. It? Oh, you're doing one meal a day? Uh, yeah, one. And then I try to eat something before 7 o'clock when I start my fasting again. Mm. Okay. All right. So this is my suggestion since I'm a, an expert in tumors and I'm being very sarcastic. <laughs> um, now, the, the, the tumors actually are, they do produce estrogen. So that could be a barrier for sure because it's an estrogen generator, just like even your fat makes estrogen after menopause. So estrogen can prevent you from losing weight for sure. So there's a couple tips that you may want to look at. One is that I would not consume any cheese whatsoever, any dairy, if you have a fibroid. Um, the other thing is that uh, uh, I would start to find a product called DIM, which is a concentrated cruciferous. Start consuming the cruciferous foods. They're antiestrogenic. That can potentially help. Um, yes, that's what I would do. And then one more thing. I would try this experiment. I would try to go eat one meal every other day and see if you can't just really speed things up. It's just, just a suggestion, um, especially for weight loss, especially if your metabolism is slow and you might have some tumors. All right, thanks for your call. Hey, Doug, you're from Columbus, Ohio. How you doing? Yes, I am. Very good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I, before I get to my question, your, your, your quiz question, um, if it ends up being soap, does that mean that all the people who are eating the pod tides were right? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, thought. if you're hungry. Yes, okay. you, <laughs> you are correct on that. Yeah, you are correct on that. That was funny. <laughs> 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 okay, um, my question is. I did um, it, but I didn't. Diabetic. <laughs> diabetic. Over the course of uh, three months, I was able to get off of insulin. Blood sugars almost to normal, 120, 130 range. Uh, was doing the warrior diet for about a month. Uh, decided to try my first seven-day fast, water only. Was successful. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, came out of it uh, gently with, with broth, as, you know, as your video suggests. And then went back into the warrior diet or warrior fast with the keto diet, uh, staying under 30 carbs a day. Mm -hmm. But... Since I came off the seven-day fast, my blood sugars have started going back up, mm -hmm. um, basically following the same thing I did prior to the seven-day fast. Mm -hmm. And by back up, I'm saying like uh, I'm, I'm in the 180 to the 220 range. Okay. So I was just curious as to uh, your feedback. Yeah, good question. Um, I'm trying to think if I, yes, I did a video. I don't think I released it on this topic. Um, what's happening is it's obviously not coming from your diet because you're not eating, eating sugar, right? Right, right. Yeah. So the question is, where is it coming from? It's coming from your liver. Your liver is actually making it. It's called uh, gluconeogenesis. Now the question is, why? Well, the only reason for that would be that your your liver you're still probably not out of the woods fully with this insulin resistance, and so the body. Um, I won't get into the full explanation, but your 
um, when you wake up in the morning, your blood sugars could be high. I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a temporary situation. And I think uh, if you keep going over time, it's going to be better and better. You may even find that when you eat, it goes down. It's really weird. Uh, the other thing that I think I would do if I were you in the morning is I would go for a very long walk and uh, just burn off that extra sugar. Um, and I'll also realize that um, if we're taking, if we look at, let's say your blood sugar is 180 fasting and uh, normal blood sugar should be 80. How much sugar is that? That's a level teaspoon in all of your blood. So you have two, you basically have two teaspoons, which is not significant compared to the average person's diet. So it's not going to be like massively dangerous, but the point is that I think I would f refocus your energy on supporting your liver, milk thistle, uh, increase, make sure your vegetables are, you know, you have a lot lar of lar lar vegetables. You can take certain things to speed up uh, insulin resistance, opposite of vinegar, uh, more potassium, chromium might help, vitamin D. Those are some things that I would do and also B1 just to speed things up. But I think um, that's pretty much what's happening and stay tuned for the video that I just did on, on this and I'll re release it next week. Thanks, Doug. Karen, what is the uh, answer to this question? Tide pods. No, I'm just kidding. What's the answer? Soap. 100%? No, not 100%, but pretty darn close. You know what? You guys are absolutely correct. Now, the question is, why does soap work better than alcohol? Mad Dog 2020. Are you just throwing that out there because I'm just, I'm just looking, looking at Steve. Me, I'm looking at Steve. Uh, to answer the question. I think soap... Uh, it must have Here's something. our new studio cam. I just thought I'd let you know oh. so that you folks know that there is someone behind the green curtain and that the Bergs are heavily invested in doing a quality show. So here's all the gadgets back here. <laughs> and so See, they thought you were faking it. I know. I, it I was faking it. Disembodied voice. Whoever's on YouTube as D. Mary, D. Mary is your absolute fan. Oh, wow. And by the way, he's behind glass. I he's am. in a whole separate room. Yeah, so they won't let me out. I'm not allowed to get near the birds. We uh, are social <laughs> distancing <laughs> from Steve. So let me tell you, Steve. So, so the, the virus, and Karen, the virus has a lipid or fat layer around it, okay? Just like our cells. Who are you talking to? You. Oh. And so this virus um, dissolves with a solvent in soap, much better than the alcohol. So the soap dissolves the layer of the virus, and it also breaks up the connection between the virus and your hands because it, our hands are also fat, the layer of the fat. So it just breaks it up, and all, they all fall off, and you are good to go with that soap, Karen. It doesn't matter if I it's like a liquid it. soap, a regular soap, uh, made with animal fat or plant fat. It all works the same. Wow. Uh, soap is actually also, it's a combination of a... Um, Lipotrophic, so it dissolves lipids and water soluble. It's quite interesting chemistry. It's like a alkaline salt with a, with a, a fat. Mm -hmm. Lye. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, Karen. It's actually quite fascinating, but I won't get into that right now. Okay. Um, do we have a good question? Yeah. A simple one that I can answer. <laughs> okay. Do nuts need to be soaked and sprouted, or sprouted um, to be eaten? healthily or especially if you um, have a sensitivity to it because there's this thing called enzyme inhibitors which basically block the release of nutrition from nuts to some degree so you're eating these nuts with these enzyme inhibitors and it can create not just the digestive bloating but it can you know it's not going to release the full you know all the nutrient. nutrition from that nut or seed so soak your nuts Karen soak your nuts <laughs> but you know, there's nothing fancy about that. Literally, you put them in a jar of water overnight, overnight, and then you pour the water out. Rinse them out. Rinse them off, and then what I really love to do now it, is to lay them on a, a pan and roast them just a little bit, especially walnuts. Ah, oh, they get just nice or and a dehydrator. crispy. Or you can use a dehydrator, but if you don't have that equipment, just use your oven, 200, 150, leave the door open. And um, yeah, and so with almonds, right, or you just don't roast them and you just keep rinsing them every day and they will sprout just like seeds. That's right. 
So there you have it. That's your cooking lesson for the day. Um, now, what's your thought on oil pulling? And you might have to explain that for people who don't know. So s sometimes people use um, like coconut oil they put in their mouth to pull toxins out of the mouth. So um, they just swish for yeah. a while and then they Hon spit the oil out. Honestly, I mean, people swear by it. I just, I, I couldn't find any actual data on it to tell you if what it's actually doing for real. And I don't know. I, I really don't have an opinion. I don't know if it works or not works. I haven't really dug into it. Okay. Um, but you tried and let me know if it pulls your toxins out. Yeah. And that was, oh, I didn't write the name. Sorry about that. But give it a try and let us know. So several questions about kids and keto. Yeah. Kids and pregnant women and some idea that maybe kids shouldn't do keto. What's what say you? Well, I think they should. I think they should do keto. Um, they can tolerate a little more carb, but in the form of uh, maybe a bit more berries and, uh, um, but not like apples because it's way too sweet. You know, like maybe a sweet potato or a yam, something like that. It's because like I know that our kids, their metabolism, including my own when I was growing up and yours, it was like so fast. If you go low on carb, 20 grams, you're going to be a bean pole. You're just going to be so skinny. So, um, you know, it's a situation. Do you, it's not an unhealthy thing, but I think a little bit of carb, I think what destroys everything is the, what I was raised in or what you were raised in, like mm -hmm. sugar and the refined carbs and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden you still were skinny, but then it wrecks your metabolism as you get older. So for those of you that are watching that are kids or infants, um, that I our kids are infants? Yes. If you're I would watching not, and you're an infant, I would not um, stay away. abuse the carbohydrates. I would, you know, do, do what you need to do, but I would definitely not do the refined sugars and carbs. Right. And that's the biggest thing. So the kids shouldn't be having the, the refined sugars and all the grains. I have another quiz, Karen. Oh, good. Okay. So I want to talk about something called the insulin index. It's different than the glycemic index. All right, it's all those non-carbohydrate items that are rated from high to low. And the question is, what has the highest insulin, what's, what's the uh, item that's the highest on the list of the insulin index, not the glycemic index, that item that will spike insulin? Okay, see if anyone can get that one. Can you repeat that? W you weren't paying attention? <laughs> you weren't <laughs> listening? <laughs> Someone's question. I'm sure so they were for, listening to you. For Karen, for, for so my. this is to your... Okay, okay we're talking about Sorry the about insulin that. index, insulin. Not, not the glycemic index. Okay. It's a insulin. scale right. of all the non-carbohydrate things, mm -hmm. items that can spike your insulin. So it's not, not a blood carbohydrate, triggers. but it will spike your insulin. Yeah. I know and what's highest them. on the list? That's what I want to know. That's mm, the question. I think I know. Okay. Well, don't tell anyone yet. Okay. All right. Hey, Joe, you're from Hudson, Florida. You had a question about <laughs> the difference between unrefined and refined mm. coconut oil, right? Right. Great. So, good question. Um, obviously, the more unrefined, the better. The, the coconut oil has some real interesting properties. It has um, immune properties. It has something called lauric acid. There's really only two things I know that have lauric acid. One is breast milk and the other is coconut oil, unrefined. And it's really good, for, it's an antiviral, it's good for your immune system. It's antimicrobial. Um, coconut oil doesn't have a lot of vitamins or necessarily minerals, um, but it has essential fats and it's good for the immune system. And that oil turns into um, ketones pretty fast. But the refining process with coconut oil, it just kind of it takes out of these, these uh, heat sensitive uh, phytonutrients as well as the, um, the oils that are very beneficial. So if you can, I would do the unrefined oil, the raw coconut oil if possible, and uh, extra virgin as well. Yes, that's what we're doing. Uh, and uh, we called the show last uh, September and uh, I wanted to tell Karen that uh, this, this call is rooster approved. <laughs> uh -huh. We were maintaining uh, 
I'm maintaining a hundred pounds weight loss, and my wife is maintaining a ninety-six pound weight loss. Oh, wow. wow! Wow! Congratulations! That's so great, Joe. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah we're doing great, and uh, we really like the show and uh, all the good info you provide everyone. How old is your grandbaby? Oh my gosh, she's a year and a half now. We have to bring uh, her on the show. Yeah, we will. Yes, because I love I love babies. <laughs> oh, she is the best. Does she have to stay behind the glass? And too? she's well, so she's the smartest baby ever, of course. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Uh, that was uh, amazing thanks, success. Guys. Well done. Good Good too. And, and we'll pull yeah. this up. We'll we'll show the baby very soon. Good work. But this, um, yeah, Lucy is a very very uh, robust, solid, keto friendly kid. Um, extremely coordinated and oh, she's very smart really and of extremely course. healthy. Of like course. every grandparent does that, right? You, your grandkid is the smartest and the best. I was going to say the, be the best athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, she's Karen. One very and soon. A half. Give, it, give it a year. <laughs> what do we have as our answer? Uh, okay. So we have some really interesting answers. I'm going to read them all. Okay. The top answers have been uh, maltodextrin and fructose. Um, but then glucose, protein, soy, gluten, and MSG, and my favorite answer, jelly beans. Okay, so right there, I know that you guys are reading my book, so well <laughs> done. Very well done on that. I appreciate that. Um, there's something even higher than that, okay? <gasps> of all those things? Yes. Protein? We're talking about a protein. We're talking about a protein effect on oh, the insulin. A specific protein. Yeah. You're asking... Okay, so... It's an item. It's an item. And the answer oh, is... Well, no, let's, let's ask them again. Let's narrow it down and ask them again. Let me just tell them because we have things to talk about. All right. So this is going to be the... Um, this is whey protein powder. Mm, no, whey I protein powder I probably is, missed some is answers the highest wow. on the insulin index. Okay? So it's a non-carbohydrate. Wow. And it's pretty darn high. So am I against it? I'm not saying not to take it. I'm just saying that um, it's a very lean protein powder, and I do know it's, it's a bit stressful on the liver because anytime you have with no protein, it's kind of like a refined product, or no fat, it's like a really, really, really concentrated protein. Without the fat, uh, it could be stressful on the liver. Um, I, I know when I consume it, it's just kind of like, I don't do well with it. Some people do fine, and uh, it's in certain recipes, not a big deal. It's not gonna, I don't think it's going to hurt you. but Just the, be aware. But the point is that when you take whey protein, it does stimulate insulin, but it also stimulates another hormone called glucagon, which is the opposing hormone. So I'm not saying anyone's going to get fat on that at all, but it does affect insulin. So let's say you're a bodybuilder and you're like, okay, so I want to keep my insulin a little bit higher because it's anabolic for your muscles. Well, you can do protein, more protein powder. Um, but I would not do crazy amounts simply because it's it's a refined product, and um, you also need the fat. And that's all I'm going to say about it, Karen. And that's all he's going to say about it. Good. So I have some more questions coming up after you um, You have another question, I think. I see that there. Okay. Oh, yeah, there was a question about could you, if you had a kidney transplant and had no gallbladder, <laughs> yeah. successfully do the keto diet? With some modification, because if you have kidney disease, you can't do lot, it depends what stage you are at because potassium is protective against the kidney, but once you get to like the later stages, that could be bad. So you, you'd have to um, find out what nutrients you cannot consume and then you have to modify the diet. You know, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So you can do it, it's just more difficult. I think to, to prevent kidney problems um, would be to consume low carb and also, for sure, because we know diabetes, uh, high sugar messes with your kidney. Well, let, I mean, when I think of keto, I think primarily avoiding sugar and grains. Right. Obviously, there are some starchy vegetables in there and the, the fruits and stuff. But I, when I think of sugar, I think of those fruits anyway. So fruits and grains. So you're saying that... Just doing that might be tricky for someone who has a kidney issue, or what, what aspect are you saying would be challenging for If someone, someone has advanced kidney issues, um, they cannot consume 
certain nutrients in high amounts, mm. potassium, mm. phosphorus, mm. and there's several others. So you have to modify that diet because um, they can't release, they're retaining, see, normally potassium is not retained very well. So it's not like sodium where your body holds it. So if you have too much potassium, it goes right through you. You don't have to worry about a, a toxic effect from potassium. But with a kidney, advanced kidney issue, you do. But you check with your doctor because the, you know, a lot of times if it's like a mild kidney problem, you can do potassium. Mm -hmm. Potassium is very therapeutic to the kidneys, Karen. But you know, in this case, yeah? the question was about a kidney transplant. Oh, this so is it's, different. Yes. It's beyond the bad okay. kidney. They okay. have a brand new or Karen, a I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention close enough. Consignment store. I wasn't kidney. paying attention. You weren't um, paying attention. I you wasn't lost interest. interest. I lost interest. <laughs> but here's the thing that um, if you have a kidney interest. transplant, um, yes, you do need to do the you know the keto and you don't need to restrict potassium and you have you're going to be on this medication that's a anti-kidney rejection medication, it could be prednisone, it could be several others. In which case, you're going to have to counter that. Colostrum comes to mind as a good counter to taking prednisone because prednisone has some serious problems down the road. So colostrum is important and um, keeping a good healthy keto plan. Good. Okay. All right. So are we Almost ready for another quiz? I think that we are ready for another quiz, and this will give me time also to get more questions. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I want to talk about the glycemic index. Okay? It's all the things that can stimulate your blood sugars, right? Mainly carbohydrate. But I want to talk about what sugar alcohol, which is an alternative sweetener, is highest on the glycemic index. So another way of saying that is what sugar alcohol is the worst to take if you're on the keto plan? Sugar alcohol. Mm -hmm. Give examples of that for people. Well, like, you know, like xylitol, okay. erythritol, you know, things like that. Okay. Sugar alcohols. Not alcohol, Karen. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you're from Los Angeles. You had a question. Um, looks like we have an issue, Steve. Um, so, Jerry, I think I can read your question. So I will just read it. You lost 68 pounds on keto mm -hmm. since September. Will I continue to lose? Yes, possibly. But it depends if you have more to lose. What happens when you do keto over a period of time, uh, many people hit a plateau. Their body gets used to um, a certain set point. And what you might want to do is look at various things. And realize that an insulin resistance is behind these set points. Where, in other words, a point that you can't get below. And you just have to keep going until you achieve that. But what you can do if you wanted to keep it going and if you hit a stall is you want to increase the length of intermittent fasting. Maybe you need to go to um, once every other day or once a day as far as eating goes. Maybe you also want to um, get more sleep or bring your carbs down, or very, very importantly, adjust the amount of fat that you're eating. I found with some people, you need to bring your fats down to about 75 grams per day, simply because your, your system has become more efficient and the dietary fat is being turned into ketones and using that instead of your own fat. So you might wanna adjust the amount of fat and I think um, you, might be benef you might benefit from that. Jerry, can, I, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Did that answer your question, or, or is there any additional? Well, no, not not not, not exactly. Um, so I uh, started the keto diet in, in September. Okay. And um, I I've lost uh, from I went from two eighteen down to one fifty two. The last weighing, which was about a week ago. Oh. And uh, I eat three meals a day, and my plate looks like a mound so high that it almost falls off the plate okay and i have things like uh, a whole avocado and a four to six ounces of, of uh, protein and a whole lemon at every meal uh i have an avocado at every meal i mean i might and vegetables like you wouldn't believe 
and lots and lots of, of cooking with olive oil. Okay. And I got down to 152. Now, my question is this. Will I melt to death if I stay on that diet? Because I'm losing weight. You wouldn't believe it. But I'm eating. I can't believe I'm eating like this. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, you're wanting to retain your weight. You don't want to lose any more, right? Well, I, w I, would like to, I would like to know if uh, the reason I keep losing is because I do have, still have a little bit of a belly issue around uh, up to the back to the front. This, uh, when you grab onto it, it feels like this, there's about all around, there's probably like 10 or 15 more pounds to go. But I've been so big all my life that, uh, not, that you know, I'm, I'm going to cross the 150 mark into, into the 40s. I haven't been like that since I was in the... Uh, I don't know, uh, eighth grade, seventh grade. Wow. Okay. I think I, get, I got your question. My, my weight was, yeah, okay, good. Okay. So, uh, one, excuse me, let me just say one other thing. I, I'm kind of locked down here at PAC. And uh, so, uh, Lyrica, I got off Lyrica with Calmec. I got off Entresta with potassium citrate. I got off Lasix, Pravastatin. My insulin went down from 25 two types of insulin at 25 units each down to five and five once a day. So I, I just want to tell you that whatever is in this diet is like I'm getting off all these drugs. Wow, that's fantastic. As well. Well done. Yeah, I'm just worried that I'm going to wind up melting away. <laughs> right. Never well, dream. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, sometimes a diabetic type 1 who's on insulin has an uh, as a major weight loss because the body's going after your protein and, it's, and that's kind of an unhealthy situation. The fact that you you're requiring less insulin is a very good thing because excess amounts of insulin is bad for your body tissues. Um, so I think you're going on the right track, and I would ride the wave. Um, but there's a couple of things that you can do to stop the loss of weight if you're uh, in the situation you are. There's two things. One is you can add more fat okay, to the meal or MCT oil, which is the fat. So that will actually definitely stop your weight loss. Okay. Second thing is to bring your carbohydrates a little higher but within the range. So you're up to 50 grams. You, you, know, you can go up to maybe 40 or 50 carbs. Let's say you're doing uh, berries or hummus or something like that um, and keep your carbs up without the sugar but just Bring your carbs up so you're still within keto, but it's not, not too high. But the fact that you're coming off the medications and you're doing great is a successful action. You ride the wave and continue it. But you can always adjust, uh, control things by understanding like what will do what. So that's what I would do, Jerry. Well done, and thanks for calling in. Karen, what do we got? What is the worst sugar alcohol on the planet Earth? Okay, so we got a couple of he different ones here. The top are maltitol, maltodextrin, uh, xylitol, and then also ascorbitol. Okay, so um, the worst is maltitol. Okay, maltitol, not mannitol, but maltitol. Mannitol is not good, but maltitol is the one that has on the glycemic index is about 36. So. Wow. It's something that uh, is in a lot of sugar-free things, but I don't recommend using it because it creates a problem. But realize it's like 36, but if you have a good amount of it, you know, that's like going to create a, a big issue. It's not going to stay 36. It's going to go up because uh, of something else like called gly gly glycemic load, which I don't want to get into. But now, xylitol does produce an effect on insulin. It's like 13 really low. I consume it on a regular basis, uh, but that's definitely um, has some effect. Erythritol is zero. Allulose is zero. So they don't have any effects on your blood sugars. And of course, you know, uh, monk fruit and stevia are not sugar alcohols, but they will have zero effect as well. But maltitol is the one you want to stay away from, and, and um, maltodextrin is a sugar, not a sugar alcohol. Okay. Well, there certainly was a little bit of a misunderstanding on what a sugar alcohol is. Yes. And that's for another video. That is, f I actually have a video on that. You can okay. search it. Yeah, and for people who are new, it's important to say, if you go to YouTube, uh, 
to the Dr. Berg channel or if you go to drberg.com. Under blog. Under blog. There's a good search bar right now. Yeah. And they can it's search almost it. easier on drberg.com to find the video you want. But there's up to 5,000 videos on YouTube. We spend a lot of time to figure out this. We just recently completed this, Karen, the search bar that basically anything you type, it'll definitely pull up the right video now. So you don't have to worry about not finding the video. Unfortunately, on YouTube, I don't know what they've done since October, but you pull up my videos and you can't find a lot of them. So that's why you want to go to drberg.com. Right. Okay. I have a question here. Yes. So, um, someone here, a gal, was asking, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name on YouTube. Um, why does she gain weight when she has work pressures, even though she's not eating any sugar or mm -hmm. carbohydrates? One, one of the hidden, hidden things that will keep you out of ketosis or put weight on is stress. Stress activates the hormone cortisol. Cortisol turns your own body tissue into fat. It will definitely cause weight gain for sure. I mean, take a look at the condition called um, Cushing syndrome. That's a condition where you have a lot of cortisol going through your body. I mean, you got a huge belly. Um, um, so yeah, it's cortisol. Stress. Stress. So the solution is to quit your job. No. The solution is to uh, figure out ways to not let work stress you out or to make sure you're taking walks during lunch or when you get home. Um, look That's at things, correct. do things, other activities that don't keep you inside your head. And there you go. Good question, Karen. Yeah. Okay, Mohammed from Pennsylvania. You had a question? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, thanks for your, uh, taking my call. So, Dr. Sure. I saw your video about the hair and it was pretty information, you know. So, the only thing is I have a question that uh, you said when the person hair loss is due to zinc deficiency and the color loss due to the copper. And is it basically if the person can start taking those mm, supplements, you know, it can reverse your hair to the color back to the black or the zinc is coming, your hair loss can help on that thing, you know. Or other thing is basically what's the first early sign of deficiency in zinc and copper, you know. Well, That's my question. there's a lot of um, symptoms with the deficiency of zinc and copper that have nothing to do with your hair. Um, but copper is part of the vitamin C complex in nature. And um, so you may find um, fatigue would be one common symptom or where you're brushing your teeth and you get a little pink toothbrush because it's bleeding easily. Spider veins would be something, but zinc deficiency could be a lowered testosterone as one symptom if you're a guy. Uh, so there's, there's other things. But as far as the color of the hair, this one's a tough one because um, some people get their colors that your body makes and you get a lot more hydrogen peroxide generated as a, it's called an oxidant. So your, your body actually makes it. It's not coming from the external. And it's like take, do an experiment. Just take some um, hydrogen peroxide and put it through your hair and see what happens. No, don't do that. It just will take, take the color right out. Um, you could try PABA, that's one, uh, copper. Um, selenium, by the way, is really good to counter hydrogen peroxide. That's an oxidizer. And so if you were to take selenium and, you know, I think the best thing I would do, instead of even taking a supplement, I would, you know, you can take the trace minerals for sure, I would try to get your stress down as low as possible once you've done those two things because um, I think you want to really implement the basics. And so that's what I would do. Thanks for your question. Karen. Yes. Do we have a good question, well, easy this one? This is interesting. I think this is uh, Amy. She says that you talk a lot about vitamin D and she was taking 50,000 IUs. I don't know for how long. But she said it didn't change her blood levels. What else can she do? Mm. Uh, and then she says, should I do it for a longer period of time? But she doesn't say how long she was doing it. So what do you think? Well, this is interesting because you would think 50,000 international units of vitamin D would, would totally bring your levels way off the scale. This probably means that there's, um, there's another barrier involved that you have to go down the list and try to figure out what it is. It could be like a genetic defect called a polymorphism. 
but you need to do a DNA test to figure that out, in which case you need large amounts over a period of time. And also, to get your vitamin D level to back where it needs, you can't get it back within a week or two. It takes, on a healthy person, three to four months to mm -hmm. get your vitamin D level back. That might be it. That could be it. The other thing is your gut absorption, if there's some gut damage. Um, make sure when you take your vitamin D that you're taking it with a meal because the fat will help the absorption. Um, the other thing too is to try to also, in addition, get sun. Um, if you don't have enough bile salts, that could be an issue. There's all these different factors. I've done so many videos, you can watch more on that, but that's what I would do if I were you. Okay? Okay, good. You know, Karen, what? That, that brings up the Can next question. Quiz? <laughs> okay, so let's say, for example, you want to protect yourself, okay, your immune system. Mm -hmm. And you want to protect against viruses. Mm -hmm. What is more important, fixing the diet or taking the key supplements, vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C? What would you weigh more as far as importance? Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you like that question? Yeah. I thought it was a good question. It's a good question. Okay, let's see what people say. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Zinc. So let's go right to Koya from Japan. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi uh, thank you for taking the call. Uh, my, per my English might not be perfect, but I'll try my best. That's okay. Sure. Okay. Yes. So uh, my question is uh, I'm thinking of doing a keto diet. And I've been uh, watching a lot of video of uh, your channel. And um, yes, uh, basically my question is, uh, I, I, I'm doing, I'm uh, trying to do a keto, and uh, I wanted to take uh, uh, multivitamin, but I had something called uh, uh, these enteric cortis multivitamins. And that dissolves uh, in the small intestine instead of uh, going through the stomach. So, do you recommend uh, taking a supplement with the uh, enteric cortical caps? So, I missed the word. It's enteric what? Uh, enteric coated. Co enteric co something. What? Coated. Yeah, co coated. coated. Oh, enteric coated supplements. I got it. Okay. I got your question. Okay, so let me just give you my suggestion with that. There's two main supplements when you start keto that are beneficial, kind of like a, like a requirement for keto, just like you want the B vitamins and you want the minerals and trace minerals. Okay, those are the two that are kind of a bare bones thing. The other ones are great. Um, when you do in enteric, it, it's protected against the stomach and it kind of goes in the small intestine. The, I would look at, instead I would look instead of looking at enteric or not, I would look at the quality of the vitamin. Does it come from food? Is it the natural vitamins? Does it come from a food complex? Or is it synthetic? That's number one. Uh, the minerals, um, do they ha are they are quality? Like um, the trace minerals, I like the plant-based trace minerals, but the other ones can be you know, just without chemicals. Um, do they have the sufficient quantity? Like you need a lot of potassium. These are things I would look at. Um, but the, the problem you're going to run into is the, the B vitamins because it's hard to find natural B vitamins unless you're doing nutritional yeast. Um, we have a product called um, the Mitochondria Energy, which is one of my favorite. It's, or we, we changed the name to Keto Energy. And I try to find, I put in there natural B vitamins, which is really hard to find, very expensive. Um, I mean, even one of the B vitamins, B1, naturally, it's like, $8,500 per kilogram. That's how much that ingredient is. Now, if you buy a synthetic, it's like $10 a kilogram. So I went with the more expensive one because I wanted a high quality, put it in there. But you could search in, in your country and try to find something that's really natural. That's what I would do if I were you. And uh, I'm glad that you're calling. And uh, I think you should definitely start it because I think you said you were considering it. So um, Thank you thanks for calling. All right, Karen. What do we have as an answer? So ask the question again for people who just came. All right, what is more important if we had to make a decision? 
fixing the diet to prevent like or support your immune system to prevent any viral is issues. Fixing the diet or taking supplements, vitamin D, zinc, or vitamin C. If you had a choice. Only? Only. So take supplements. Or fix a diet. Or fix my diet. Yeah. What would protect you more? Well, I'm going to tell you that everybody said fix your diet, but I'm a rebel and I'm going to go with the vitamin C, D, and zinc. Okay, so the answer is fix the diet. Oh. Sorry, okay. Karen. <laughs> well, it's, I figured it was a trick question. I mean, no. that was too easy, fix let me, the let diet. Me, let me tell you why, especially when we're dealing with this, uh, this current situation. Um, the hmm. biggest risk factor is pre-existing health problems. Right. Primarily metabolic issues. Right. Now, what does that mean, metabolic? I'm talking about metabolic syndrome, like high blood pressure, cardiovascular, obesity, diabetes, those factors. That's the bulk of predisposing factors. That's what increases the risk factor. Being healthy, it's a very, very minor issue. Having these issues, it's a big risk. So guess what keto and IF does? It just happens to address metabolic issues, metabolic syndrome. So if you were to not fix that and take zinc on top of it or vitamin C or vitamin D, it's not going to work. I mean, I really knew that. I just wanted to I know it you up. did. I know you did. Because um, you were hoping I did the qu trick question. That's the next question. Oh, <laughs> see, there's always a trick question. But I'm telling you, um, one of the things that like, and I think it's important to stay safe, but I want to expand that definition of staying safe because a lot of people are saying, hey, stay safe, you know. And um, my mind, staying safe would be building up the immune system, strengthening the immune system. Because think about it. Um, if you have a bulletproof immune system and you're not doing these things to create metabolic syndrome, talk about being bulletproofed. That's creating long-lasting security. So... Next time someone analogy, says... Interesting bulletproof. I mean, I think if you're at war, right, you could hide in a building or you could wear a bulletproof vest. You could bulletproof Oh, I yourself, like that. I like that. Right? I want to so use that. Freedom I'm going to use that. Bulletproof vest. Move around and handle things. And Keto is a bulletproof vest. For your immune system. Right. It'd like be hard thing. to get an image on that, but I like it. I like where you're going I with like that. I like it. I like it. Okay. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that from you, Karen. Okay. Um, Check the, I'll bill you. Okay. Just put it on my tab. All right. So <laughs> Jessica from Santa Clara, Clara, Santa California. Santa California. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Dr. Berg. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I'm calling, I'm calling because I just found you not so long ago, and I've been listening, watching all your videos on vitamin D and autoimmune diseases. Yeah. My, hus my husband suffers from erythium nodosum, mm -hmm. so I started him on your vitamin D and K2 um, supplement, and he was doing much better, but I started him with a uh, low dose, 50,000 I use. Mm -hmm. So um, I just started him on 100 thousand mm -hmm. I use. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to make sure, I need to start supplementing him as well with vitamin A and magnesium. I just saw your video on that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, and B6. And B6. Okay, and do you know, um, can you suggest how much those, how much on each one or? Okay, so let me just kind of, I'll, I'll, get it? I'll mm -hmm. just answer that question. There's one of my videos that I, I gave you a reference from a doctor from Brazil. I would reach out to that doc and study, because I gave you a lot of references and it tells you the amounts and everything. You can figure all that out. Um, and I just have to be careful just not to give you any specific treatments for any illnesses. So that's my disclaimer. But you can get the data from him. He's the medical doctor. He has a lot of great data. And he uses higher dosages of vitamin D, and that's where I got it from, um, with the B6, the zinc, and the magnesium. But here's the thing. Um, also make sure you're drinking, he's drinking at least two and a half liters of, of liquid a day, just because you want to keep the kidneys going, just to reduce any chance that there could be an issue with kidney stones. But honestly, the odds of that happening are much less than winning the, the lottery, because um, what he talks about is that you would have to take massive doses. I'm talking like uh, 200,000 to a million IUs of vitamin D for months to years before you had 
some complications. But I want you to dig into that because there's also some data on the parathyroid uh, test that you want to look at as well. I don't want to get into it, but great that he's doing better. And um, yes, vitamin D is a really important thing uh, on that topic. Thanks, jo Jessica. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a question from social media. Okay. Can zinc picolinate make me taller? Of course. That's awesome. Now I have no idea. I don't. Oh. I don't. I have no idea. I do know that if some if children are failing to, you know, thrive, thrive, or basically that's, that's a different thing. But if okay. they're not growing <laughs> as well as they should, putting them on a healthy diet really will help. I'm, I, I saw that in our practice, you know, like these kids, like the father is 6'2", and the, this child who's like a teenager should be, you know, he's 13, he should be a lot taller, and then you put them on the right diet, and bam, they mm -hmm. grow. And they need trace minerals. Those are cofactors for proteins, and I'm talking about bone growth, too, and vitamin D. I think I, think I need to do a video on teenagers, mm, the diet for teenagers. I think you're right. I am? Really? <laughs> you're right, Dr. Yes. Berg. Yes. Of course you are. Hey, there's a question here that's asking, um, what are all the vitamins I should take and the dosages? How, I'll do a video on that, too. But doesn't that vary so much person to person? Yeah, I would read the label. And uh, on the, it's, in every single bottle, it has a description. It has the directions. And just follow that for right now as a general rule. Um, because there's a lot of exceptions. You know, I do want to mention one thing, because this question always comes up, and I know someone is sitting there going, you know what, I didn't get asked my question, but I, my, I, I did keto and my cholesterol went up, my LDL went up. That's mm -hmm. the bad cholesterol, should I be concerned? So if anyone has that question, just say, yes, that was my question. And so um, I'm going to answer that right now, Karen. And um, your, your LDL went up. And we did an advanced lipid test that you can get. And it measures the two different types of LDL. There's a good and a bad. And uh, your good LDL was the one that was high. So there was not a problem. What happens, though, when you have a fat cell that is shrinking, your fat cells shrink when you do keto and IF. Did you know that not only triglycerides are stored in the fat, but cholesterol is also stored in the fat? Hmm. And so what happens when the fat cell shrinks your body retains the cholesterol, but not the triglyceride, until a certain point, and then it dumps it up to 300 milligrams. So here you are doing keto, your cholesterol's fine, LDL's fine, all of a sudden, bam, you, it goes up. Is that a, a problem? No, it's being dumped from your fat cell. Mm. So as long as you're keeping your carbs down, you really have nothing to worry about, but that's why it really goes up, okay? I was gonna ask that question. You know what? I, I just sensed that, so I just beat you to the... Uh, hey, but I have another point to make. Yes. What is happening at the end of August? We're doing the Keto Summit, and it's virtual, so you can actually watch from your home. And there should, be, parking. There should be a link down there. I think Steve put a link. Uh, if he didn't, you can go to our website and Dr. get the link. Com. And it's even on um, YouTube as well. Mm. We should put it on Facebook. But you guys should come because we're going to be covering a lot of great information on keto and IF and a lot of other surprises. And a lot uh, of speakers. Yes. Ten different speakers, top of their field, doctors. and. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be awful swell. Yeah, so you're going to learn a lot, and um, I, we, we hope to, that you attend. Yeah. All right, so let's go to uh, Tanya from Washington, D.C. It's right down the street. Are you there, Tanya? Yes, I'm here. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you both? Great, Good. thanks. Great, great. Well, uh, Dr. Berg, I, in November of 2019, I was diagnosed as type 2 diabetic. Mm -hmm. And um, a few, a month later, um, I had an early onset of atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Since then, um, um, following your diet, well, following you, I have done intermittent fasting, but not keto. Mm -hmm. And I've lost 46 pounds so far. Wow. wow However, that's great. 
However, um, I want to lose at least 38 more pounds, and my weight is at a stall. Mm. So I've been doing intermittent fasting like twice a day. Mm -hmm. But should I, how do I speed this weight loss up? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think I'm going to say <laughs> add keto. keto. Um, because what, okay. you're, what, what you're doing with intermittent fasting is you're actually reducing your insulin, which is, that's producing the powerful benefit. But did you also know that okay. carb carbohydrates um, are behind, that's the big thing also that's stimulating insulin. And also, when you have insulin problems, you develop insulin resistance, and that's really what's, that's what causes diabetes. And when you have insulin yeah. resistance, you have a very difficult time absorbing potassium and magnesium, two minerals that are essential to keep the heart um, in rhythm, to prevent arrhythmias, FYI. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, in addition, I have reversed my diabetes, and my that's A1C a is 5.4. So <laughs> hey, that's I'm happy great. about that. So that's imagine great. Awesome. just yeah. adding keto, getting a couple of things awesome. out of your diet. You're going to be that's great, Tanya. Brand new. <laughs> well done. Okay. Uh, do you guys do one-on-one -on -one consulting? No, but we do one on consult right now. We do uh, on a live show. Okay. <laughs> but we just do a lot of yeah. videos, and we just try to try to. We want you to get the data so you can do it yourself, and Educate you're not dependent yourself. on anyone else, but you. Yes. Thanks, Tanya. Really appreciate. And I appreciate you both. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we appreciate okay. you. Okay. Okay. See ya. Hey, Kathy. You are our last caller. You're from Pennsylvania. You had a question. Go ahead. Hi, Dr. Burke. Hi. I am. I'm 54 years old, and I have been doing keto since last July. Right now, I'm doing one meal a day, and I have lost 104 pounds. Oh my gosh, that's wow. well done. Wow. Yeah. It is really working for me. I have no more inflammation, no more joint pain. I have mental clarity. I don't take antacids. I have energy. I sleep well. But the one problem I'm having is sometimes I get extremely cold, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering why that happens and what can, what can I do about it? That is probably related to um, this uh, adjusting. Yeah, sometimes it takes could take a couple of years to really get your body um, handled with this insulin resistance. And, and that relates to certain um, connections to the thyroid. I did a video on this a while ago. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not an issue. One thing you can do to speed things up is to take uh, C-Calp in the morning, take a little more iodine, and that will jumpstart the thyroid. But what's happening is your body is running on um, a more efficient fuel, and the thyroid is not needing to work as hard. So you, pr you may even find that the thyroid hormones go down a little bit. Not the, not the one from the pituitary, but the actual thyroid hormones, and that could relate to a temperature change. But that should clear up over time. But a, a little iodine, I think, will take you to the next level and keep you warmed up. Thanks, Kathy. That's amazing. Hey, guys, I really, we really appreciate your attention. Um, we're going to see you next week, same time. Stay tuned for uh, not just more videos, but the cooking videos that we're going to... Cooking channel. There's a whole series of real great recipes. Yes. A lot of things coming your way. Fun with keto. <laughs> okay. See you guys later.